How to detox your liver for fat loss. Yes, a poorly functioning liver can actually contribute to weight gain. So if you're not doing these five things I'm gonna discuss in this video, there's a good chance your liver might not be functioning optimally, which might be making it a challenge to lose weight. So the problem with all of this is that most people don't really consider liver function as a potential hurdle for fat loss. It's always about calories in versus calories out to about 95% of the population. To me though, it's one of the biggest factors that can help with effective fat loss. So in this video, you're to learn why the liver is important for fat loss, what the common indicators of poor liver function are, and then we'll go over the five tips to improve liver function so you can lose weight. So the thyroid gland, which is your primary metabolic regulator, releases thyroid hormone initially in its inactive form known as T4, and about 70 to 80% of T4 is converted into the active form T3 in the liver. So this conversion is critical for sustaining an optimal metabolic rate. Now the liver is also one of the largest detoxifiers in the body, which is vital for clearing hormones like estrogen. And the problem with all of this is that if your liver is impaired, which is extremely common today, this detoxification process can be blunted, which can negatively affect many of the hormones which play a significant role in weight gain or weight loss. So this means you could potentially have issues with chronically elevated levels of cortisol, estrogen dominance, which is just having too much estrogen, and lower levels of testosterone, which can all contribute to fat accumulation. And if we backtrack to the thyroid though, an overburdened liver could could cause you to experience conversion problems with T4 to T3, which is not gonna be good for your metabolic rate, and particularly bad for weight gain. Now, there are a lot of ways to tell if your liver's been through hell and back, so here are some of the more common signs that it's not functioning optimally. You're experiencing things like weight gain, hormonal imbalances like estrogen dominance and low thyroid, itchy skin, chronic fatigue and weakness, digestive issues, glucose intolerance and insulin resistance, cognitive issues, poor skin quality, fluid retention, jaundice, and difficulty digesting fats. Now, if you really wanna lose weight though, you have to start thinking about your liver and what you can do to help it out and protect it. So let's go over some simple and very actionable tips you can do to give your liver a break so you can improve your metabolic rate and get rid of some unnecessary weight. No brainer here, but you have to stop drinking alcohol. This is one of the biggest challenges for most people, but on a personal level, I vividly remember the first time I took a month off of drinking alcohol. I lost 10 pounds and actually on the third week, I literally felt like my vision had changed. Everything was just a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant. It was weird, but kind of interesting. Now, since alcohol is metabolized primarily in the liver, its consumption can disrupt the normal breakdown of fats leading up to fat buildup in liver cells, which can further lead to detoxification issues and even poor glucose metabolism. And to reiterate, the damage done by alcohol can downregulate thyroid function, which has a pretty harsh impact on your metabolism metabolic rate. Also, alcohol can increase estrogen in more than one way, and estrogen, remember, can lead to fat accumulation. So grains, hops, and grapes from vineyards can all be sprayed with pesticides, which are endocrine-disrupting chemicals, and can promote the buildup of estrogen. Alcohol can also increase the production of aromatase, which is an enzyme that converts androgens into estrogens, which can actually increase estrogen estrogen levels in both men and women. Obviously, none of this is good and can actually compound since the dysfunctional liver can already be dealing with excess estrogen. Inferior fats like refined oils, which include soybean oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, peanut oil, and margarine should be completely eliminated from your nutrition. Due to their molecular structure, polyunsaturated fats, and their breakdown products oxidize extremely easily, leading to oxidative stress and inflammation in our bodies. And this is particularly hazardous to our cells and mitochondria, the little organelles in our cells that produce the majority of energy for our bodies. We 100 100% do not want to disrupt energy production in our cells, and PUFAs are known to do this. Now, the production and excessive consumption of these types of fats is fairly new to humans, too, approximately 150 years or so, and they're also found in almost every kind of ultra-processed food now, which is why, on average, people in the U.S. are consuming over five gallons of these oils in a year. Actually, the next time you go to your pantry or go to the grocery store, check out the labels on some of the ultra-processed foods and see if there are any types the refined oils and the ingredients. It's actually pretty shocking to see how they're in almost everything. Not only that, but they're also the primary oils used in restaurant cooking. So you kind of have to be really careful when going out to eat or getting takeout. I always try to ask what my food is being cooked in and if they can actually cook it in butter instead. 
Environmental toxins can greatly impair liver function, some of the most potent toxins we come across with on a daily basis that can be detrimental to our livers are plastics, pesticides, and herbicides, PFASs, xenoestrogens like parabens, excess iron, heavy metals, and fragrances. Now, since your liver is responsible for the majority of detoxification in your body, chronic exposure to these environmental toxins can really overburden it and indirectly contribute to fat accumulation. So some quick tips to reduce exposure to some of these toxins are, Use filtered water for drinking and showering. Reverse osmosis is arguably the best. I actually just wrote about this in my newsletter at metabolicupgrade.com. Eat organic if you can afford it. This is so you can limit pesticide exposure. Reduce grain consumption as much as possible as well, since these are often heavily sprayed with pesticides and herbicides. They're fortified with inorganic iron, and gluten is pro-inflammatory, which can potentially damage cells in the liver too. Don't heat food in plastics or drink out of plastic containers. BPA-free isn't good enough since the plastic could be made with BPF or BPS, which are arguably just as bad or worse. I would also avoid nonstick cookware entirely since they contain numerous toxic chemicals like PFASs, so try to use stainless steel. And don't use deodorant, or you can use a natural one without aluminum. I actually haven't used deodorant since about 2014, and I was still able to get married in 2017. Poor gut function, including conditions like leaky gut, can have negative effects on the liver since the gut and liver are closely interconnected through the gut-liver axis. If your digestive system is compromised, this can allow bacteria and endotoxin and other pro-inflammatory products from the gut into the bloodstream, and when these substances reach the liver, they can actually trigger an immune response and create stress and inflammation. So here are a few tips that can help you improve digestion so you can protect your liver. Avoid inferior fats like refined oils and also alcohol, again. Reduce gluten and grain products like wheat which can be heavily sprayed with herbicides and pesticides and fortified with inorganic iron. I think you can tell I'm deliberately repeating myself here. Reduce processed food consumption since they contain inferior fats, refined carbs and grains, and a variety of different types of gums, which are also pro-inflammatory and can create digestive distress as well. Also, eliminate consumption of beans and legumes since they contain high levels of plant defense chemicals and their protein bioavailability is inferior to animal protein. And as a side note, it's just kind of best to stay away from food that makes you fart. And stop taking random supplements too, since most supplements are kind of just garbage and contain fillers and additives, which can actually create digestive distress too. Fat-soluble vitamins, which are vitamins A, D, E, and K, will also be crucial for liver optimization since deficiencies in these vitamins are all associated with poor liver function. In addition to that, not getting enough fat-soluble vitamins can impair hormone function by decreasing thyroid, progesterone, and testosterone, and increasing cortisol and estrogen, which will very likely increase fat accumulation. So when you eat, it's ideal to prioritize foods that are high in vitamins A, D, E, and K. Foods high in vitamin A are grass-fed beef liver. Do not supplement with synthetic forms of vitamin A since it's actually toxic to the liver. Foods high in vitamin E are red palm oil. Foods high in vitamin K are aged cheeses. Raw cheeses are ideal and grass-fed butter is great as well. And get your vitamin D from the sun. That's the best and easiest way to get it. And pasture-raised eggs are also a great source for all four fat-soluble vitamins. So remember, the side effect of improved liver health is gonna be fat loss. Give these a try and if you want my seven day simple fat loss meal plan, go download it at metabolicupgrade.com. Link is in the description below and check out more of my fat loss videos. I hope they help.